بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته and welcome to Fiqh Al-Mu'amalat online course and today topic we'll be talking about um, the um, Islamic financial uh, intermediations in the financial system uh, so uh, briefly we have to understand that um, uh, the current Islamic banking uh, uh, business model is based on uh, financial intermediations. Of course, there are different views. What's the best directions of the Islamic finance could be could be based on a trading uh, house or an investment house or an investment banking or enterprise banking. So uh, there are a few uh, ideas and few thoughts how to redirect the Islamic financial institutions and what's the best approach to design and structure the business model. But as of now, uh, in the legacy of the uh, early generations, we are within the um, Islamic banking activities uh, based on the uh, financial intermediation, meaning al wasat al maliyah meaning uh, Islamic banking is acting uh, within the financial intermediations uh, by observing, of course, the Sharia rules uh, and the uh, principle in offering uh, that kind of business. Let, uh, let me highlight a few points uh, within this context of the uh, financial intermediation. Number one, uh, the Islamic financial system, of course, is governed by the Sharia law. Meaning that, number one, we agree that the business model is a financial intermediation. It's wasata maliya. But despite this wasata maliya does exist in uh, the offering of Islamic business uh, products and services, there are some points uh, that uh, those or uh, this financial intermediation is subscribing to. Number one, Sharia law is the law that govern the uh, business model. Meaning you act your financial uh, intermediations uh, within uh, the Sharia law. You have to comply with the Sharia law and regulation. The point number two uh, is that uh, the sources of Sharia, uh, the primary sources and the secondary sources and the other aspect of it, such as the maqasid, the Sharia, legal maxims, and so on and so forth, uh, are representing as well the sources of Islamic finance because at the end of the day Islamic finance is part of Sharia so the same rules of sources of Sharia uh, law are applicable uh, to the Islamic finance where the financial intermediation is, is operating within the other point is that uh, uh, as we mentioned uh, Islamic finance is one of the Sharia aspects Meaning that when you look at the Islamic finance structure or when you look at the, uh, the, the Islam, the religion structure or the Sharia structure, if you want to go directly to the law, Sharia structure, so you have Fiqh al-Ibadat, you have Fiqh al-Mu'amalat, and Fiqh al-Mu'amalat, you have a different sections of law. And you have the section of al uh, which basically uh, the foundations of what's so called Islamic banking uh, and finance. So at the end of the day, Islamic banking or Islamic finance is one of the Sharia aspect, is one of, chapter, of the chapters uh, of the Sharia law. So meaning that we are talking about uh, um, uh, uh, buying and selling in the traditional market or buying and selling uh, in uh, online platform or buying and selling in the context of banking or buying and selling in the context of a regulated market, you are still under the scope of Bayer, which is one of the chapters of Fiqh al-Mu'amalat, one of the chapters, one of the aspects of Sharia. So, uh, <clears throat> even Islamic finance industry, Islamic economic and Islamic finance expand as much as you can imagine. At the end of the day, it is still chapters of Sharia. It's still one of the Sharia aspects. Uh, in uh, doing uh, uh, business and finance. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, again, going to the previous point, uh, the sources of the Sharia, the Sharia law rules and principles are applicable uh, to those transactions as well. It doesn't mean being in business and finance or being a regulated market, you will have an exemption uh, from escaping from those rules and uh, requirements of Sharia as long as you carry on <coughs> sorry, a financial transactions based on lease or sales, uh, you are still governed within the Sharia rules and principles. 
The following point is that uh, the Islamic banks involved in trading uh, within a regulated market. So this is the tricky part, not really tricky part, but this is a point to be uh, uh, well understood. So two points here, or you may say three points. Number one, you are uh, the Islamic banking is operating within the financial intermediation. Number two, the Islamic banking is uh, operating within a regulated market. Number three, uh, Islamic banking is unique trade based and others, of course, trade based instruments within the financial intermediation. That's how it should be understood, meaning that in a normal uh, uh, market, traditional market uh, out there, traditional market that you every day you do your daily shopping, um, you do buying and selling. So you do buying and selling based on traditional way, whereby you see the uh, sellers, then you see the commodity, you give the money, pick up in plastic back and go, or paper back, more uh, environment friendly, right? Now, when it comes to Islamic banking, it is the same. Buying and selling, similar to what you do uh, out there, uh, but sometimes you don't see the commodity there. Uh, so here, some additional features has been uh, introduced uh, to meet the environments of the financial intermediations, whereby constructive possessions, you know, uh, uh, has been uh, uh, become an important aspect. Uh, constructive liquidations, for example, um, uh, and uh, payments uh, through system, uh, through gateways, through e-wallets, uh, through online banking. So things has been uh, emerged in doing the trade and business, uh, which is a little bit in the form uh, or in the substance, by right, in the substance. Similar to the traditional market, you buy, you sell, you do leasing. Same in the banking, you buy, you sell, you do leasing. So substance is the same, but in the form is a bit different. In the form, traditionally, you see the seller, you see the commodity, you pay, you take it, it's in plastic bag. But the regulated market, you may buy stock, uh, you may sell stock, but you may not see exactly the uh, commodity because it's a, a bit different. Sometimes it is in, in a virtual form. Uh, but it is understood by specifications uh, based on whatever you know asset you are going to buy and the payment could be through uh, online transactions uh, and you don't know the buyer uh, the, the seller exactly but you know the institutions uh, but one of the officer will represent that institution in transacting uh, that <clears throat> sales in traditional market uh, there is no rules how to conclude the deal as long as it is sharia compliance but a regulated market because it is regulated there are some standards guidelines and so on and so forth you have to comply with so the, the point here i'm trying to highlight is that uh, um, uh, the financial intermediations uh, use a uh, trade-based transactions and others like lease based partnership based and so on and so forth but still uh, within uh, the uh, financial intermediation is still in compliance with the Sharia rules and requirements, but what has been done, uh, the form has a bit uh, adjusted and enhanced, uh, and the contract has been used, uh, are enhanced features, which are also a Sharia compliance, like the possession, for example. We are not talking about the cons uh, uh, physical possession, but we are talking about constructive possessions. The ijab and the kabul, you know, it is expressly it's expressed verbally between you and the buyer. Now, the offer acceptance has shifted to clicking the icons. So the offer is presented, like online transactions, you know, Amazon.com, eBay, Lazada, Shopee, and so on and so forth, or some uh, hotels that they provide their uh, uh, services, or some airlines if you want to buy a ticket. So you present their offer uh, uh, and display it, and feeding up the information and clicking, clicking. That's the course of uh, concluding uh, uh, the acceptance in order to finalize the financial transactions. So as I, I, as I mentioned, the, the substance is still the same, but the form, the way that you carry on the transactions has been a little bit shifted uh, and adjusted to suit uh, the new environments, uh, which is more related to, the, uh, to online uh, banking, to uh, digital uh, uh, economy, uh, to um, uh, more uh, sophisticated uh, ways to conclude the transaction, but the substance where the Sharia rules and um, principle are still relevant, uh, still applicable.
The other point I would like to highlight is that Islamic banking, of course, changed their business uh, status uh, on selected model. Uh, this is a very important point uh, uh, that we should understand in doing the financial intermediations and, and, and in the offering. Conventionally speaking, in the conventional banking, uh, you always see the financial institutions as a lender. Most of the time, you will see it as a lender. Maybe it except only in the deposit side when you will see it as a borrower. For the fixed deposit, you can see it as a borrower. But mainly in the financing and the facility uh, and the loans, uh, the conventional banking is always regarded as a loan providers. But when it comes to the Islamic banking, within the financial intermediation, you see that uh, the Islamic banking taking a different positions. Sometimes the bank is a seller, sometimes the bank is a buyer, sometimes the bank is a, uh, is a lessor, is a leasee, is an agent, is a principal, is a broker, um, is a capital provider, is a mudarib, is a partner. Uh, so different position changes because of the uh, positions of the contract. So when you introduce a contract, and you engage with the uh, uh, customers so the relationship between the customers and the bank and also in addition to the nature of the contract will determine the positions of the bank if it if it is for example in murabaha the bank will be the seller but sometimes the bank will be a buyer as well the bank could be a, a agent could be a principal and so on and so forth so this one rotations in the positions of the financial institutions within the financial intermediation may change depends what kind of contract uh, you have uh, introduced and determined identified to conclude uh, the financial transactions and uh, the other point is that uh, uh, islamic banking they don't use loan uh, this is a very common mistake which sometimes uh, disturb me and i think disturb many of uh, Islamic finance uh, practitioners as well, um, whereby uh, use a loan, loan, a Islamic loan, a personal uh, Islamic loan. Uh, uh, this one is actually not appropriate. Uh, so we have to use the, the, the word uh, financing, Islamic financing. We don't use a, a loan. A loan doesn't exist in the facilities of Islamic finance. Loan does exist in the conventional one, but Islamic one, there is no loan. Um, that operates as an instrument to, to make money and generate income and accumulate wealth because it's not allowed. Uh, any return um, coupled with loan will tend to amount to riba, which is not allowed. But instead of loan, there are some different facilities or financing facilities which are based on a different contract, not loan, different contract, such as Mudaraba, Musharaka, you know, Istisna, Salam, Ju'ala, and so on and so forth. Uh, Ijara. <clears throat> but there is no loan there. So uh, uh, the loan is not used uh, in Islamic finance, but sometimes it is used, the Qard Hassan, precisely, uh, the Qard Hassan it is used to structure some Islamic uh, banking facilities, some structured product, yes. Uh, sometimes the loan is used as a part of the structure to facilitate uh, some offering, but it is not used as a, a main contract uh, with the uh, uh, clients uh, to uh, identify him as a borrower and determine uh, the financial institutions as a lender. No such thing in Islamic finance. So Islamic finance use Islamic facility. We shouldn't call it a loan or Islamic loan. We should call it Islamic financing or Islamic facilities or Islamic services. Uh, and uh, the facility will be determined according to the contract selected. And based on that, the bank will take its position and the client will take its own positions. But there is no borrower and there is no lender. It could be there but just as an additional supporting contract to design some products and services. This is a very important point. Whereas in conventionally, definitely, they are mostly driven by providing uh, different uh, facilities based on loan. Now, when we go to the uh, uh, overall, which is the last point I would like to highlight in these sessions, when we look at the Islamic facilities um, or Islamic finance, uh, <clears throat> product and services, you will see them that they are based on the different principles. As I mentioned, there is no loan, but what we have, we have sales-based principles, we have a profit-based principle, we have a lease-based principle or contract, free of charge or fee-based, sorry, fee-based principles, and we have supporting principle or supporting contract. 
the sales-based principle or the sales-based contract or the sales-based facility, which include like sales, mudaraba, uh, sorry, yeah, murabaha, tawarruq, salam, istisna, BBE, sijrar, wafa, uh, and so on and so forth. All al buyur the list of al buyur what that we are going to highlight, uh, will be parked under this. Uh, category. The other one is a profit sharing like uh, Mudaraba, Musharaka, Muzara'a, Mugarasa. All a profit sharing base will be parked under this category. Then we have the lease, which is the Ijara base. We have Ishara Tashiriya, we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ijara Mutahe uh, Tamlik, and we have Ishara Musufa Fiddimma. All these types of Ijara will be parked on the uh, lease category. Then we have a fee based classes or contract or facilities. Uh, or principle, let's say wakala, like juana, which is commission, will be parked under this. And we have a supporting contract or supporting principles or a security uh, contract like kafala, rahm, and hawala, and others. And of course, you may add also the free of charge, which is the qart hasan, as a principle that can be used not to generate a profit but to support uh, some of the financial transactions. So we have around uh, six classes uh, of or six clusters. Uh, that can be used in Islamic uh, uh, finance facilities and products and services, and each one it has a, a long list, uh, uh, or sometimes so, so some of them a limited uh, list list of uh, the contract that could be used uh, in offering uh, uh, Islamic uh, finance product and facilities. Some of them as a core contract to generate revenue. Some of them are supporting contract. Uh, uh, to make the facility perfect. Some of them uh, are additional and complementary to make the contract uh, uh, perfect, but it is not the main driver of the facility. So this is, uh, in overall, the uh, uh, Islamic uh, 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 contract that we may discuss them in the future. And with that, inshallah, come to the end of the session and try to see you soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.